Hey everyone, welcome to the Gaming X. Today we're going to be taking a look at Past Cure on the Xbox One. Now developed by Phantom 8 Studios, a team of just 8, you cannot deny that ambition with this one. Past Cure is a dark psychological thriller that blurs the lines between drama and reality while combining elements of action, horror and stealth. But does this mashup of genres work is the big question. Now before we jump into our review, if you do like what you see today, hit like below, leave us a comment with your thoughts, or even just hit subscribe. It's by far the easiest way to support the channel. Now with that being said, let's jump in and see if Past Cure is worth adding to your collection. So graphics, and with pre-release marketing, I was actually getting excited for this one I was brought in. It had a futuristic tone that wasn't too far removed from games such as Mirror's Edge, and it really did look stunning. Unfortunately, now the game is here, they've not succeeded. Instead, what we get is a bland looking and sterile game. Textures are low detail, you'll face frequent frame rate drops, and honestly, it feels for a large part unfinished. On top of these issues, there's popping throughout the game with doors literally appearing and disappearing. There's areas of darkness for stealth, but they're in fact actually just masking underdeveloped locations in the game. And then there's a large portion of pretty standard animations which are just simply missing. Now what do I mean by missing animations? Well, the simplest of actions, such as picking up a gun or entering a new location, they've skipped the animation of picking it up or entering a doorway, instead fading to black and the next thing you know the gun is in your hand or you're in the new location. For a game released in 2018, that's criminal. Granted, they are a small team and texture popping, missing animation, frame rate issues, it could be somewhat forgiven if an indie sensibility of creativity was displayed in the environment, but it's not. Horror segments are made up of sterile white locations, which while interesting at first, they just drag on way too long. Then when it comes to the real world, it's a parking garage and a hotel lobby not the most thrilling of locations, and they seem to have just looped the same rooms over and over, moved from parking garage 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. My god for this reason, a 4 hour game feels like an absolute eternity. This is an attempt at AAA graphics on an indie budget, but with a complete lack of originality, it unfortunately simply feels dated. So gameplay, and let's start with controls, and again, it just leaves a lot to be desired. Bringing elements of horror, combat and stealth together, it sounds like a potential recipe for success, but unfortunately here, none are developed well enough to feel enjoyable. During all you will have access to special abilities, which again are in no way original, an out of body experience where you can fly around the room and interact, and then the slowing down time which is ripped straight from fear and max pain from years and years ago. Unfortunately everything just feels clunky, movement is largely ok at least, but one weird design decision is in the sprint motion, where you need to hold the left stick down, not simply click it in once. I found myself stuttering as it came to sprinting. Then there's the combat and it's absolutely terrible. There's no weight to the weaponry, there's no cover mechanics that you would typically expect. And all of the guns, the aiming, it's just either slow and cumbersome or just way too fast to control. There's no sweet spot in the options. Finally, there's the stealth and I just ran into frequent issues here. Enemies can see through walls occasionally, I would sneak up for a stealth attack and sometimes it just wouldn't kick in. And then the enemy AI is just, well, dumb. Seeing bodies around them, they don't even react. Maybe they want it out of the game too. Now there's some inspired set pieces and interesting moments in the storyline that get you excited for what's coming. And what it might not sound it for example, but there's a chess puzzle at the beginning which piqued my curiosity. It's a lot more exciting than it sounds as you're trapped in the room with some form of psychological enemy. But instead the game takes control away and puts this into a cutscene. Now this is by far Pascal's biggest problem. It's not that the controls are clunky or the graphics can be dull at times, it's that every time something actually interesting happens, 
it takes control away from you. You have no choice or power and frequently the game would give me control back, let me take just two or three steps, then take it away from me again as something interesting happens. So audio, and the audio it's, it's largely forgettable here, yeah? there is one nice classical piece I will say in here, but apart from that it just does nothing more than add a layer of background noise. Now there's only so much we can expect from the audio to do in locations such as a parking garage or as a hotel lobby, so generally it works well. Vice acting throughout is more than passable and sometimes even reaches a great standard. Then there's the horror levels where dialogue is masked with reverb and it's a nice touch if not exactly screaming originality. I did have a couple of issues though, um, the audio went silent for a few seconds on me where it was trying to connect tracks between environments, occasionally they overlapped and created just a blanket of noise. Then there's the lip syncing as well which on a number of occasions did fall out of place and this was made even more obvious as the subtitles were ahead as well. Generally though, it is good work and it does everything you should expect. So the final verdict, and I just used a statement in the audio section of this review which sums past cure up perfectly. It's not screaming originality. The attempt at hiding an indie development with some incredible visuals during marketing, unfortunately it just lasts a matter of seconds before the magic wears off and you see it for what it truly is. The marketing was a stunning magician's assistant in place to distract you. What we in fact get here is average graphics at best with some terrible design at parts. The doors disappear, animations are simply missing instead of opting to fade to black to stitch these scenes together, and the futuristic environments that look to match Mirror's Edge are in fact just bland and completely fired of creativity. Then we get to the gameplay and the mashup of genres and it really could have worked but instead we get mediocre stealth at best, tedious horror segments which outstay their welcome, and action that feels about 10 years behind the fluidity we are so used to now. Pascual I'm sure at some point was ambitious in idea, but in its implementation it's simply lazy, and priced at $29.99 it's way overpriced. The Gaming X awards Pascual a generous 4 out of 10. Thanks for watching, if you like what you've seen today, why not hit subscribe and join us for reviews and news every week. We'll see you on the next Gaming X.